In this lesson, we're going to cover the Copy Components tool. The Copy Components tool is utilized to go back and create copies of selected components or sub-assemblies and either copy them into the same window or you can copy them into a new file and you can also decide if you want to reuse existing components or if you want to give them new names. The file that we're going to use for this lesson is called levelofdetail.iam and it can be found in your chapter 9 exercise folder. When using the copy components tool only the components will be copied so if there are any associative drawings those drawings will not be copied. If you need to do so you may want to look at using the design assistant or better yet look at utilizing utilizing Autodesk Vault which has to, to maintain those relationships. So let's start off by selecting the Copy Components tool. In the Copy Components dialog box here you'll see that in this case I already had a part selected so it was already added to the list so in this case I can go back and select them individually or if I select on the top level in the browser all of those components will be added to the list. Now that I have components added to the list, let's take a look at these given icons. The blue icon tells us that it's going to make a brand new copy of that specific component. The yellow tells us that it's going to reuse the existing component and become another occurrence. The gray is going to tell us that we will exclude that specific component from this copy. You can change the status of these components. If you want them all to be of one status, you can select the top level assembly. Or you can go down and select them individually, changing their status. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out of the tool. So I'm going to restart the Copy Components tool. And what I want to work with for our example here is going to be the cylinder head and the cylinder body. And let's start off and run through a couple different scenarios. So we'll start back off by changing both of these here to the reuse. And when I go back and do the reuse, just going to click on next. And you'll see the dialog box is blank at this time because they're going to basically be the exact same parts or components in just an occurrence. In this case, what I can do is insert them into this assembly or open them in a new window. So let's do the insert into the assembly and you see I can go back and place this here. So let's expand that down in the browser here. If I take a look at those components, you'll see that it's cylinder and cylinder head with the number two telling me that it's a second occurrence. If I try to drag off the cylinder head, you'll notice that I cannot do that. Again, if I expand on those components, you'll see that the assembly constraints were brought across. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna delete those two components so again, I'm going to start up the Copy Components tool, select our two components that we're working with here, and what we'll do, I'm going to go back and create brand new copies of both of our components, click Next, and now in the Copy Components file name, what I can do now is determine what is the file name going to be, and also where will it be saved. I have a couple different ways of doing that. Down at the bottom I have a naming scheme, and you'll see the default is underscore copy, so we can go back and change that. Or, if I wanted to, I could go back and determine a prefix. So, the one that I used last time was CBT. Go back and apply that, and you'll see that the names have changed. So, what I'll do next is I will uncheck the prefix and recheck the suffix. Now that the suffix has been rechecked, what I need to do is click on Apply to go back and have that naming scheme be reapplied. You can click in the new name and then type in whatever name that you would like. For the file location, if I right click I have three different methods to do. I can go back with a user path and with the user path if I click in here I can navigate out and select the specific location for that file to be. Or if I right click again and select workspace the file will be saved to the current workspace. Or I can select source path. For the source path option it will be saved in the exact location that the file being copied is located. In this case that's what I'll do. And let's also go back and insert this again into the same assembly. And let's see what happens. I'll go back and place it in the exact same place that we were before. And at this point, if I try to drag off the cylinder head, you'll notice that I can't. If I go back and expand on this in the browser, you'll notice that each of the files have been renamed in here. So these are brand new files. And again, if I expand on them, you'll see again that the assembly constraints were copied over Again, I'm going to go ahead and delete those. 
And again, let's go back and do the Copy Component Tool. I'm going to select both of them again. And again, let's go back and place in brand new components. Click Next. In this case, for the suffix, let's go Copy Component 2. I'll apply that. And let's try it in a new window. So now in the new window, you'll see that it also applied that same naming scheme to the top level assembly here. I have the cylinder, copy number two, and the cylinder head, copy number two. And again, if I expand these, you'll see that the assembly constraints were also brought over. So now any change done to any of these components will have no direct reflection on the existing ones or vice versa.